Alan has spent so many happy times here in Wigtown in southwest Scotland over the years that he decided to leave his home in Leicestershire and bring his family here nearly two decades ago. Oh, this part of the world is lovely. It's such a forgotten part of Scotland. It's so quiet. Um, apart from that, thousands of duck and thousands of geese and oh, it's absolutely fantastic. He became secretary of the Wigtown Bay Wildfowlers Club and he's seen plenty of changes. The most important was the acquisition of more wetland. It was a real team effort. The club with WHT, uh, WHT's help, also Scottish National Heritage Grant aided us and the County Council and uh, all our members clubbed together and, and uh, we managed to buy the land. And uh, at that point the council says fine we'll go ahead with the nature reserve and, uh, and, and that, was, uh, that was lovely so it, was a, it, it, was, it went ever so well. Wigtown is just one of the clubs helped by the Wildfowl Habitat Trust. The loan the WHT arranged meant suddenly the wildfowling club had security and were taken more seriously. This was all field when uh, we bought it with the WHT help. It, uh, it was in with the Merse across the bank that you've just seen there. And uh, anyway, we, we got a scheme together along with the council and WHT again, uh, sorry, SNH again, to, uh, to create this bird reserve here. Um, and it's been a marvellous wetland uh, along with the bird hide. And uh, uh, we get a lot of tourists and a lot of bird watchers here. To, just to see this this area and it brings in an awful lot of duck that this does and the geese don't usually use it till after the shooting season but then it just gets covered in geese so it's, uh, it's very spectacular. The club donated some of the land to the council for them to build a public bird hide. Today it's the perfect place to take refuge from the high winds so Alan can tell us about his interesting wildfowling gun which used to be taken out for slightly larger quarry. Well, this is one of the, the guns I use after the geese. This is a lovely old gun, uh, uh, an E.M. Riley uh, hammer gun, underlever. Well, originally, this gun must have been uh, a double rifle because it's got a cheek piece on it. And no doubt it was a rifled elephant gun. But, um, as I say, just uh, no rifling in it now. It's just a shotgun and we just use it as a, as a wildfowl gun. So it might have seen a great deal of use, this, this gun in its past. Why did you go to all that effort? Um, tradition. Tradition. No, I mean, one or two of the lads that uh, come up into and shoot with the club, they, they've got some lovely old guns, real old warfowling guns, and they just treasure them. They just love to uh, load all their own cartridges and uh, just love to take them out on the marsh. We're hopeful we might see the gun in action today, but in the hands of Alan's son, William. The wind has now really picked up, and if the geese grazing on farmland get up within range, it's still going to have to be a tremendous shot to bring them down. William battles his way over the wetland. He spots a few other bobble hats in the distance. We're not alone, but wildfowlers tend to enjoy their own company in muddy holes. So once we're settled in one of William's favourite spots, what's he hoping will happen? I reckon this, uh, we've got geese inland over there, been feeding all day long, in within 20 minutes or so they're going to come off, uh, obviously back out onto the mud flats behind us. A uh, bit of an untraditional way of doing it, normal way of doing it is get them flighting in in the morning, but this is, uh, this is the next best thing. And uh, with this wind they're going to come very, very quickly. Um, wind right behind them, they're going to jump off, uh, off a field as soon as it kind of darkens and that's it, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. M might be too high, it might be left, might be right, but we might get lucky, you never know. How strong do you reckon the wind is? Um, very. <laughs> it's, uh, it must be blowing, it'll be a, a good 40 mile an hour wind we're in tonight, obviously sitting in the hole, we're not too bad, we're out of it, but uh, stick your head out of the hole and you'll you'll know you're in it. So, uh, let's see what, if it's... What did you get this morning? Uh, I've got a single pink uh, in this very hole. Um, a, a bit easier bird because it was flying into this wind instead of flying against it, uh, flying with it. So uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tricky one. A tricky bird. Uh, I think he's Mickey. Oh, there's a dog chasing a bit of rubbish across the marsh. Come here, Jake. 
As the light starts to fade, the flight of pinks appear, but curls away from us. William thinks it's all over for the night, but then a solitary goose comes hurtling over. Oh, beautiful! William is a very happy young man and claims that's the best shot of his life. He gave that missile of a goose 14 feet of lead. The only trouble is now trying to find the high velocity projectile which has probably hit the mud so hard it's created its own crater. The gale force wind isn't going to help Jake pick up any scent either. Amazingly, William finds it after a couple of sweeps. He's a decent size for a pink foot. Back at base, there's a welcoming fire and an opportunity for William to relive the moment. I thought that big bunch just went out and I thought, well, fair enough, I've gone wide. That was typical wild fowling. And then all of a sudden, that was it. I saw, I saw that single, you know, as you see in the video, I'm just kind of, oh, there's one there. And uh, yeah, that was it. So I cocked the hammers and, and up we went. And uh, another one for the pot. But a difficult bird. Very difficult. That was really shifting on in that wind. It really, it was the best goose I've ever shot. It really, really just icing on the cake. I, I, could, I could put the gun away for the rest of the season now. So that's it. Yeah, really happy. Really, really happy that one. How do you go about taking a bird like that? Um, a, a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of years missing has gone into, into, uh, into getting a bird like that. Um, you just, you just know they're coming so quick they, they look slow but they're coming so quick and you know they've got a big wind up behind them and you just start well and start when they're coming at you you get the gun up and just get it swinging and there's no point thinking right i'm going to give it that much lead i'm going to give it that much lead you just throw the gun through it and like in there it takes over and it just uh and the, and the trigger fires and you ho hopefully you connect and thankfully we, we connected tonight so it was really really good really happy Absolutely it's horrible weather for me to film in, but best weather ever for Walth Early. Best weather ever. You can't you can't beat it. A, a bit of rain in the air and a, and a real good wind. Just it. Uh, a lot of people don't like going out in it, but I love it. Can't beat it. The gun is lovingly cleaned and put away. William understands and appreciates why using a piece of engineering like this is something special. Just one of those guns. It's prestige. You're using a, a good old. Double double hammer gun on the marsh. There was a lot of lads come up with a big double eight bows and a couple of big single four bows, and it, it, it's just the nostalgia of hearing that big boom go off somewhere down the marsh. And it, like I'll I'll never find a gun like that on the market ever again. And like now I've got it, I'm, it's never going to leave me. Um, hopefully it'll go on to William White's Junior one day, but uh, but not too soon. I need to get it off Alan White Senior first. It's certainly done the trick for him tonight. It's one to remember.